big tournament, what you expect to see. Mm-hmm. But like we, outside of very select few big tournaments, we haven't had a big tournament since Worlds, basically. You know what I mean? We've had a bunch of store championships. And I feel like <clears throat> that's a really like terrible place to take data from. Because at most you have 30 people kind of a thing, and the player skill is all across the map, right? I mean, you've got people that have are really hardcore players to play all the time, and then you get the guys that like just picked it up at Christmas, right? Like they saw this new cool game and they picked it up, and then they heard that, oh, hey, there's a store championship close by. I'm going to go there and I'm going to play. That's and true. so, um, sort of differentiate by the top eight list, or the top four. Kind yeah, because like- it really depends on the tournament, right? Like, I mean, there, there are times, like, I mean, I was at tournaments myself where it was like the top four are not lists I would ever expect to see. It just happened to fall that way on that day. You know what I mean? Like, this guy got to play someone that was was new, and so his list made it a couple rounds farther than it, we would normally see. So I'm really interested to see with, like, the first regional starting to come in, like, what happens there. Yeah, right, because the assumption there is that you'll get higher quality pay, play. People are driving in. Uh, and it's also along the lines of, like, you, you have to play more games, right? Like, you're going to be playing five, maybe six games, not three and four before you get to those top cuts. Yeah. And uh, so there are a lot of, I feel like, I hate calling it a cheese list, but, like, there are very, there are quite a number of lists out there right now that are semi-popular, like, say, your Triple Squint, or uh, there's been some, like, Double Hawk Y-Wing builds for Scum out there. That like they just don't have the hit points to stand up. I don't feel like in a in a big tournament, where you can have that one game where you just roll poorly and, and your crap dies right away. It's funny you mention that because a triple squint won uh, a regional, I believe, last weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not saying it can't happen. I just don't feel like it's going to be like this dominant list kind of a thing. I feel like it's going to have, it'll be one of those lists that has its day. And, you know, when someone's really flying it well, that kind of thing. And then they're going to go to another tournament the next, you know, month, and not even be in the top half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that your point about, like, trying to define the meta is an interesting one because, you know, it's hard to do. And and, and a lot of it's affected by kind of other characteristics like, you know, how many minutes are played. Oh, yeah, 100%. For the store, store championship season, I think we saw a lot of two-ship lists because they're safe in a 60-minute game. Sure. But coming into a 75-minute regional, I think – the two ship lists aren't as good. Yeah. Well, and you also got to remember for half of the store championships, if not more, we were on wave five only. We didn't have wave six in there. So like you, you got to see all those, those decimators, all those super dashes, that kind of thing. And you just didn't have auto thrusters yet. And that was a big deal there. You know what I mean? But I think kind of returning to the meta question, I mean, I think some things are sort of like going to be patently obvious. Like when the Raider comes out and all the incredible oh, man. ants hit, I'm so you're happy. Going to see a huge, a huge rise in the number of tie advance. It just seems yeah. kind of categorically true, right? Sure. And so you can say, in terms of the meta, at least in its observable characteristics, that tie advance will probably feature heavily. Well, so the, and so that actually, so that gets like another point that I wanted to bring up, especially like on in the meta and that what um, you will see ships that show up in very large numbers, right? So like your your bee swarms, your things like that. Like in the tie advanced, Four it's ge- it's generally speaking whatever is new and shiny shows up a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that's good. It's just there's a bunch of like everyone wants to play it, right? I mean that's that's it's the new stuff in the game. You want to you want to try it out. Right. And, I, I think that's kind of my point though, about trying to define the meta is yeah. that popularity has to be considered as well. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Or shiny newness. <laughs> Indeed, shiny newness. Yeah, personally, I'll be glad when the kind of mint wears off of Dash, Dash's coin. You know, like what's funny is, so I've, you know, I've talked to you know people from a lot of different areas and whatnot, and uh, like I saw nothing but super dashes at every store championship. I'm talking like half the lists were dashing something. Yeah, those things are annoying. And. Uh, but, like, other people were like, I didn't see a single dash. And, like, you know, out on the West Coast and stuff like that, like, that's just not what they play out there, you know? And so you get that very localized local meta kind of thing yep. where it's just, I know in central Illinois, there's a lot of good dash players. And so you have to deal with that. Yeah. Blair, what's your uh, meta like in terms of... Oh, uh, uh, let's... This? Well, yeah, first... First store championship, it was kind of all over. Um, and, you know, another thing I want to touch on real quick... Tyler, how you were talking about the store championship season, S&V dropped kind of right smack in the middle of that, and auto thrusters 
You gotta also remember the Whisper Errata also had a pretty big effect on that. Well, that was after the Store Champion season was done, though. And it was right about at the end, but... Yeah, some, some Store Championships did manage to enjoy the uh, the Whisper nerf. Yeah, it was... That was that was curious too because they were, that was supposed to be after the uh, the last day. That's mm. why they picked that day. That's why they picked April fifteenth. Was uh, store champs were supposed to be done April third or something like that? Uh, yeah, but you know results keep pouring in. Sure, absolutely. Um, but anyway, yeah, first one it was just kind of all over the place. I faced it was like four B's and Chewy, then a Fat Han and Corin, then Whisper Chirino, and then Dash Kian. And then the, the top cut, I just had two rematches. Second one, it was like triple all triple uh, interceptors with ATs. And then I was Fell, Whisper, Vader, or Doom Shuttle, I mean. And then a uh, uh, Panic Attack. And then a uh, TIE Swarm. And then the last one I went to, I played like, it was a marathon. They did five rounds of Swiss and then a cut to eight. And so I faced like seven unique lists, I think. And I swear to oh. Christ, uh, five of them were Rebel Swarm. Rebel Swarm slash Control. I never faced four Bs and a Z, but so many people had that, you know, the R3A2 Y-Wing with the Ion. Some had BTL, some didn't. And then, you know, Tactician B-Wing, Ion B-Wing. Uh, those were absolutely everywhere. I was absolutely stunned at the amount of that so yeah it was kind of all over the place uh to be perfectly honest i don't feel like my localized meta is that strong like the seattle area there's a couple of pretty good players but there's no one really up on a big level i feel like someone who's gonna you know make a final eight run at worlds although if you guys know richard sue he actually used to live around here and he he made the Finally, yeah. I know you played him and beat him at nationals, Tyler. But yeah, he uh, he so he came up to the campaign against cancer. He um, did. Saw him and Dom play an amazing. Yeah, game. that you was such a stupid game. good match. That game blew my mind. Yeah, it was that was a really tight match. Yeah, he, Richard nearly took out that swarm. I was yeah. in, like, because you know the, the list that Richard flows like an variant of it's a stress variant of uh, Spanish nationals. Mm -hmm. Um, and it basically you just substitute one of the blues with a gold you know, with the stress bot and the ICT and the title. Um, and he, he, I, I mean, the swarm is kind of the enemy of that list in many ways, but he nearly beat it. Dom yeah. had to roll like three rounds in a row. He had to have some pretty amazing rolls to survive it. It was three straight, like three natural evades with Howl Runner, right? Yeah. But yeah, it was pretty sick, oh. sick matchup. Yeah. <laughs> it went to time and it was like, you know, there was, like three wounded tie fighters versus uh, what, like a blue, I think left or something like that. It was it was it was if the, the last tie fighter died, he would have been, he would have had him on points, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it, I mean, it was that tight of a matchup. Yeah. Anyways, um, well, you always got Vassal. Yeah. Yep. That is strong enough here. Yeah, and but really, you like you were saying, Tyler, we haven't had a good gauge. Really, the only big big tournament, and it really wasn't even post wave four because it kind of happened before. And after Worlds was the Team Covenant Open. That's really been our best yeah. barometer for what. And even and that is kind of dated now because yeah, we have so SNB. Yeah, there's so much changed. And yeah, they did, they did that errata. And one other thing, theorists talked about this, is like, there's a reason you see Fell and not Tur. There's a reason you see Corn and not Eton as much. It's because pilot skill matters. And I think that's a big thing of why you see so much Chirino and not as much Oiken. But one thing about Oiken, I feel like, with the new errata, I think Dauntless really got a nice buff there with basically you get a so, free, free action from a green move. I think that's pretty huge. that's not a buff at all. That's how the card reads. Everyone was screwing it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I did not know that myself, <laughs> no, to be honest. I, I didn't either. I was playing uh, Hothi on Vassal one night, and he had uh, Oiken out and was like, no, this is actually how this is supposed to run. Like, And it's because huh. it was like when they were designing it, they were using the uh, the Night Beast timing mechanic. And okay. I was like, who the fuck plays Night Beast? Yeah. Like, like who's who's ever gonna call you that? Call you on that? Like where you're just like, oh no, you can't, because like Night Beast can't take the free focus action if he's stressed and then reveals the green. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, in any event, I feel like I feel like it really helps. Two, two points for because that was the big thing I felt about Oiken that wasn't so strong is like it's an okay ability. 
Um, but the dials have been revealed and the game has started. Oh, all right. Well, here we go. So, uh, so what's happening here is that we're seeing typical uh, play from Morgan, which is that he will auto block Chirinel into Vader um, to buy time to figure out where um, where Tex is going. So um, Matt does this in almost every game. Yeah. Yeah, no, I uh, I am pretty. I, I'm excited to see like more people experiment with Dauntless now, though. I think it'll be a, uh, I think it'll be interesting. You'll see uh, you'll see that come in a lot more. Yeah. Another point here, by the way, is that he's likely going to do a one forward with uh, Vader, and then uh, um, keep the block going, and he'll basically just turtle there in the corner and wait for text to come at him. I believe he already did. I th- I believe Morgan has initiative. So, yeah. So, so Vader's already gone, yeah. Um, any, any opinions on this style of opening? Hey, I personally don't mind it because I basically do the exact same thing with my shuttles. Only I use a defender to block it and then uh, then turn out it, if it's going to be one of those where I need to see where people are. Mm-hmm. I know some people have been, uh, I don't know, I don't think anyone's ever been annoyed with this specifically, uh, but like fortressing in general, you'll always hear like the the rage on the internets about fortressing, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm just like, it's never won anything. Like, if it was a if it was a like a really big deal that could shut, you know what I mean? Like, it was very powerful, or you know, broke the game in some way. FFG would release something for it, and it just doesn't. Yeah, I will say that it's an interesting tactic with this type of two ship opening because. It buys you time, like basically committing to a vector mm-hmm. can be very expensive when you only have two ships. Yeah. And um, with a two ship, I think it's it's particularly good. You get the line that you want. Like you, you get to run the asteroids, you get that initial, that line up really easily. Blair, what do you think about this style of opening? Well, yeah, it's pretty much what Morgan did exactly in his last game. The big thing now is going to be... Uh, when he does decide to break the fortress, and I, I know from watching Tex, he's just going to be extremely judicious with Vader. He's not. He's just basically going to try to keep him alive as long as he can. Because really, these two ships, they really have pretty much equal firepower. And so really, Vader is just the glass cannon here. I think you're going to see most player, each of them would ideally like to take out Vader, ASAP. So I think you're going to see both players try to be a bit cautious with them. So the big thing is, I mean, when is Morgan decide to break his fortress? Is he going to do it this turn, or is he going to keep waiting? Um, and it's going to be interesting the way they got those asteroids, those three in the middle. If and, you know, it looks like Chirino's heading south. Is Tex going to break those two up, or is he going to bring them down that south alley right there? Well, I mean, Vader is maneuverable enough that you could probably pick either either road. Um, so, but you're right. Tex is a very conservative player. And in fact, I think we're going to see Vader staying reasonably close to chair now. Yeah. One thing I will point out, um, especially with like an opening such as like with what a... Uh... Um, with what Morgan's doing here is realistically this isn't that much different than just K turning back and forth for a couple turns. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and that's why. Yeah, that's I another reason why I just I don't mind it. In yeah, any way. exactly. It. I mean, it's really the same thing, in essence. So, I yeah, but, I don't think it's really so bad that FFG is going to be have to say something. One thing I was I was reading an interview with Alex Davy. He was saying. He really felt like the the game was eventually gonna have to when they when he first created the game or when it was first created, it felt like they were gonna have to put some sort of objective in to prevent players from doing that, just playing super passive. But yeah, it's really really not much of an issue at all of players just fortressing up like that, in my opinion. I will say that it's a little different from the K turn in that. K turning actually introduces drift in terms of your position because um, you're actually moving your ships around. And then you, once you K, you got to do a green so you can K again. So your ability to kind of maintain 
like perfect uh, kind of positioning 